Have you ever wondered what it would be like to spend an entire year in space? The thought of floating weightless in the vast expanse of the cosmos may sound thrilling, but the reality of living in space for an extended period can have significant implications for your health. Astronauts train years to live in on International Space Station, undergoing a huge number of different tests and medical examinations. In this video, we will show you what changes in your body are happening after a year in the space. To live in space, you should first train on Earth. Health management operations for astronauts begin with their selection. Astronauts must undergo years of training on Earth before they are assigned to a flight. During that period, they are expected to stay in excellent health to be able to perform space missions. Astronauts undergo medical tests every year. The medical certification boards review those test results and certify astronauts' medical eligibility for spaceflight. The annual assessment on astronauts' physical performance is conducted to give individual guidance on exercises. Once the candidate training period is complete, new astronauts are given their mission assignment and grouped with experienced astronauts to continue training. The two types of astronauts, pilots and mission specialists, perform different functions. Pilot astronauts are assigned to fly the shuttle and command missions and mission specialists are the flight engineers assigned to conduct spacewalks, perform robotics tasks, and conduct scientific research. When the selection and preparation for the flight is done, they go to space. Spending a year on International Space Station is a hard task, the same hard as the health changes during their space travel. Some science fiction writers in the mid-20th century speculated that zero gravity would be life-giving. Blood would flow more easily, arthritis would be a thing of the past, back pain would be cured for good, and aging itself would slow down. So bring grandma along for the ride. We had hints from early in the space program that such a rosy scenario wasn't true. Astronauts returned from just a few days of weightlessness feeling weak, but they recovered. And many thought, well, maybe it isn't so bad. Then we spent more time in space. Russians on the Mir space station for months appeared to have some serious prolonged health issues on their return. The Russians were tight-lipped about the health of their cosmonauts, though, so we never knew for sure. Many of these cosmonauts, championed as heroes, were rarely seen in public after their return. It was the ISS missions that drove home the message. Long-term exposure to zero gravity is detrimental to human health on many levels. Kudos to NASA for that. To continue, we should understand that gravity in space is zero G, when gravity on Earth is one G. And we people used to live in this gravity. What's so special about 1G? This is simply the force we evolved with. Our bones are as thick as they are because of this precise level of gravitational force. Without the pervasive force of gravity all around them, sending constant signals to the cells, bones begin to demineralize and weaken. Muscles too. Expect a certain resistance when contracting without the grip of gravity, muscles atrophy, and lose their tone. You can exercise in space. Astronauts on the ISS are required to exercise for two hours each day to minimize bone loss and minimize muscle loss. This works to some degree, but nevertheless, in zero gravity, bones lose density at a rate of one or two percent per month on average, compared to the rate of an elderly person on Earth losing one percent per year. To visualize how bad that bone loss is, consider the fact that the major obstacle to fully recycling urine into drinking water on the AIS was that the filters got clogged regularly with calcium deposits. That calcium is leached from the bones into the urine. This leaching also puts the astronaut at short-term risk for kidney stones and long-term risk for kidney disease. And for all that muscle exercise on special treadmills, astronauts still find it difficult to walk or even hold a cup after returning from several months in space. Worse for the muscles is the fact that most can't be exercised. Workouts focus on the major skeletal muscles that move the limbs and torso. But there are hundreds of other muscles, cardiac, involuntary, smooth, and other skeletal that cannot be exercised. Gravity is their workout on Earth and on the IS, they aren't getting it. All those tiny muscles in the face and fingers get weaker. Tendons and ligaments also begin to fail in zero gravity. The spine lengthens and astronauts become one or two inches taller in space, which causes back pain. The Space Medicine Office of the European Astronaut Center is designing a high-tech, highly tight-fitting skin suit to help astronauts overcome back problems in space. In the body, much more is going on at a cellular level that depends on 1G. Normally, blood pools in the feet because of gravity. Our circulatory system evolved to push blood upward to the brain. 
a rather important organ. Without gravity, the circulatory system pushes blood upward, like a geyser unharnessed, leaving your head with a pounding feeling. Your heart starts beating faster to pump blood to lower parts of the body. Your body starts thinking there's a fluid surplus, asking, where is all this blood coming from? So your kidneys go into overdrive to remove excess water via urine, but now you are dehydrated and your blood starts to thicken. This in turn triggers the body to stop making red blood cells, and thus you slowly become anemic, sluggish, short of breath, and prone to infection, and so on. But this is our internal problems. However, there is more things that can damage our health in space, like radiation. In space, astronauts are exposed to varied and increased levels of radiation that are different from those on Earth. They receive a radiation dose 200 times more per day than a person on Earth. If compared with a medical x-ray examination, it turns out that the daily dose of radiation for an astronaut is 0.6 millisieverts. This is five, six sessions of chest examination. Three major sources contribute to the space radiation environment. Particles trapped in Earth's magnetic field, solar energetic particles from the sun, and galactic cosmic rays. Exposure to increased radiation can be associated with both short and long-term health consequences, depending on how much total radiation astronauts experience and the time frame in which they experience that exposure. Increased risk of cancer and degenerative diseases, such as heart disease and cataracts, have been observed in human populations exposed to radiation on Earth. Health risks for astronauts from radiation exposure in space are mainly driven by long-term impacts and can be more damaging. From the point of view of modern standards, it is impossible to stay in space permanently. A person will receive the maximum radiation dose in four years. Record-breaking astronauts spend about 850 days in space if orms are observed, which is monitored by the Radiation Safety Service of Manned Space Flights. The astronauts' lives will be shortened by no more than 2.53 years. Space travel can also cause a psychological challenges. Living in the confined quarters of a spacecraft for an extended period can be mentally taxing. The isolation, separation from loved ones, and the monotonous environment of space can lead to a range of psychological challenges for astronauts. Despite the fact that astronauts have communication with crew members, we all understand that this cannot replace the communication on Earth. To decrease the level of isolation, researchers are also looking into using virtual reality to simulate relaxing environments to help improve the mood of crews in isolation. Engaging in relevant, meaningful activities, including learning a language or learning new medical skills, could help ward off depression and boost morale. Crews may even tend to a space garden, which could have positive behavioral health benefits, in addition to providing a fresh source of food and helping to purify the air. So, after spending a year in space, you will return to Earth as a completely different person. And unfortunately, this does not mean that you will come back better than you were. Most likely, you will take with you baggage of various diseases straight from space, which will accompany you throughout your life. But even despite such problems, we would love to go on a year-long journey into space. What about you, our dear viewers? Write your answers in the comments. Let's fly together, but now, fly to watch our other videos. We are sure that you will like them. This was Space Progress Channel. See you soon for landing.